poverty in 19th century Victorian Britain's towns and cities was everywhere, and if you watched my video about the crawlers who really led the most pitiful existence, you will be well aware of just how bad life could be for those who fell through the cracks of society and onto the streets. If you were a Victorian and found yourself living a street life, grafting for daily bread and board or begging for money, then you could, if you still had some coins left after eating, avoid the rain, bitter, cold, or dangers of the night by paying to stay in a shelter of three varieties. A penny sit-up, a twopenny hangover, or a fourpenny coffin. They sound too strange to be true, bizarre and shocking to us today, but they did exist and offered a solution of sorts to the spiraling problem of homelessness, destitution and slums in the metropolis. In the Victorian era, philanthropists and missions started work to assist the poor. In the case of the Salvation Army, with soup, soap and salvation for the slums of the East End, Shelters were employed as a means of support for the homeless, and by today's standards of the welfare state, you may well be astonished that the poor were offered such rough and clearly inadequate housing as assistance. Though, if you could afford it, this was evidently viewed by clients as a better alternative to a night in a casual ward in return for hard labour. Or on the street, where the police would move you on if they saw you sleeping. The ticket price was cheap, but the costs could be dear. Your time in a shelter would be spent in the fellow company of the poor and pitiful, but misfortune may bring all manner of squalor, beastly characters, pickpockets and mischief makers. You are surely never safe from those under the influence of drink or a quick-fingered thief. Before we start, please consider clicking the subscribe button in the bottom right of your screen for more content like this. If you find this video interesting, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up and share it widely with friends and family. These two things really do show your support and help the channel grow so I can bring you more. Thank you. Check out the description for links to more interesting videos about the Victorians and take a look at the channel page for even more content. The Penny Sit-Up was one of the first and operated by the Salvation Army to provide respite from the streets for destitute clients, who were mostly homeless men, but at times women and children are known to have used them too. What made this shelter unique was that in exchange for a penny, clients would be allowed to sit on a bench in an all-night hall, which may or may not include food or heating depending on your luck, but they were not allowed to lie down and sleep on the bench. Some shelters even employed monitors to ensure people didn't take advantage by sleeping, because this wasn't permitted by the entry ticket price. A penny sit-up was the cheapest homeless shelter at that time, and the discomfort people must have suffered is reflected in the low tariff. This and the general filth and foul atmosphere makes them hardly an appealing prospect to modern eyes. But it was dry and, at the very least, wasn't a wet doorway. The Reverend George Edwards, a vicar from Southport in Lancashire, published a paper detailing his investigations into the homeless and the lodging houses which they had to endure. He didn't merely describe a penny sit-up, but he actually spent a night in one disguised as a vagrant. A night he described as the longest of my life. A night so bad that he called this lodging house in Preston the House of Despair. He describes his stay in his own words. You enter in the evening when the day is done. Already there are some 20 or 25 men there. The room is literally bare, with nothing in it, nothing. No fireplace, no stove, no hot water pipes. No sink, no water, no beds, no chairs, no blankets, no mattresses. Nothing, nothing whatever for the furnishing of the room, except a small, very small oil lamp, very dimly lighted, and four long wooden kneelers about two inches off the floor, sloping upwards towards the back. 
two of these at either ends of the room, and the other two running right down the middle of the room, back to back. What are they for? This surely is not a house of prayer. No, these are pillows, wooden pillows. And presently the floor of this room will be covered with bodies lying feet to feet in two double rows down the length of the room. When you enter, some are eating their bit of food, but remember there is no stove, no warmth, no fire here, only a washing boiler in the yard where you may get hot water. There are no cooking utensils. Every man carries his own drum under his coat behind his back. Just an old tin of some sort with a wire handle. And when your food is eaten, there is nothing to do but lie down on your length of the floor, some six feet by two feet. And then if your limbs ache with lying down on the hard boards, sit up. And if you are privileged to have one of the select spots against the wall, you can lean against that, if you will. If you are wet through, you sit or lie in your wet rags till they dry. That is all. Think of it, 10, 12, 14 hours thus, 30 to 60 men thus, night by night in misery, wretchedness, filth of body and starvation. The conversation is in the dull, hopeless undertone of exhausted men except when it flashes forth now and again in the tone of revenge, hatred and bitterness against us who have condemned them. To this, it is always heavily laden with oath or blasphemy and is of begging, pinching, roguery, trickery, cruelty. At the best of the criminal courts, their prisoners and judges, the leaden weight of exhaustion and despair is only lifted when a man is dead drunk. And so these men try to settle themselves to sleep. Sleep? Were human beings, God in dwelt ever meant thus to rest? In dirt, in degradation, in depression, indescribable. No clean horse box with freshly strewn straw. This. No well-drained pigsty with abundance of bedding, warmth and food. This. No rat hole. This. Where father, mother and baby rats may live together and seek their meat from God. But a vermin-infested room. Bare of aught but men's bodies clad in rags. Bodies which are not washed or groomed or cleaned from one twelve month to another, except when forced to go to casual ward or jail. Bodies which are half-starved, emaciated, lean. Bodies which carry the germs of horrible disease, yet which are untended, uncared for. Bodies which because they are so poor, so poor in rich life blood, are thereby fit and proper food for the tramps, the dirty beggar's worst enemy, lice. Little, crawling, clinging, biting lice, which breed in 24 hours in the seams of your clothes, next to your skin, and live upon you, biting, Biting, feeding, feeding, like the gnawing worm of hell. The atmosphere, figuratively speaking, you could cut it with a knife. You yourself sleep next to an old decrepit man who cannot always control his bodily actions. His trousers stink. Stink! You will carry the stench in your nostrils for a week. Sixty thus, and if not quite thus, all unwashed, all with the smell of the unwashed. Add to this rank tobacco smoke of all blends, some unknown even to connoisseurs, such as curbstone twist, old chews, old cigar ends, O.P.S., other people's stumps, and old dried tea leaves. Add to this foul breath, some very foul, 
Add also the stale atmosphere of the room itself when empty. And remember scarce any ventilation during the night, except the occasional opening of the door into the yard. And you may think you imagine what you never will, till you experience it. Thus the poorest of the poor live by night in Preston. Thus the local authorities allow them to live. Thus we Christian men through our ignorance, our party strife and our fear of business like reform suffer it. And shame on us all. It is the cause of this great national evil of needless degradation I wish to fight. Not any one result, disgusting though it be. Yet be it known in Preston that the penny sit-up is a Lancashire disgrace. A disgrace to the soul and spirit of man. And not a cause for pious rejoicing. My mate, when stranded, has gone to beg for bread to many a house in Preston, at which instead of being helped, he has been told, Take this ticket to the shelter in Shepherd Street. We've nothing to give you. We send all our broken meat to the shelter. Do these people know what the shelter or the penny sit-up is like? Have they ever been there? Do they know that this broken food is placed in a basket on the floor of the room and scrambled for in a wild, mad rush of angry, blaspheming men? These are facts, indisputable. And one further, do they know that these poor men, because they have slept the night in Shepherd Street Mission Shelter, and thereby, I suppose, touched the fringe of Christian sympathy, are refused admittance in the morning to a neighbouring doss house of no great refinement, lest their living freight gathered the night before in Shepherd Street Shelter should fall off then. The shelter has, I believe, been open now for some few years. Doubtless the owners and instigators feel they are doing a good work for the very poor, and this makes me hesitate in saying anything. But I am convinced such a place only brings men down permanently to a lower level than the Doss House, and encourages them to stay there. If in those years it has not been possible to put a fire in the room, to put in uh, American cloth-covered bunks like the Salvation Army have, to put forms round the room, provide some rugs to humanize and put a touch of home into the place, to light the place up with real Christian hope and effort. I say deliberately it would have been much better for everyone to have closed the shelter long ago. A more expensive upgrade to the penny sit-up was a tuppenny hangover. This was a shelter at times on heated, where the clients were provided a rope to lean on so they can fall asleep on a bench without the risk of falling out or hitting your head on the bench in front of you. The rope would be strung from wall to wall and early every morning it would be loosened or cut as a wake-up call. Everyone being promptly turned out onto the streets once more. It's been suggested that the saying, sleep tight, derives from this, but it's actually closer to meaning sleep safely than having anything to do with its type of Victorian shelter. The practice apparently continued into the early 20th century. And indeed, George Orwell alludes to it in his book, Down and Out, in London and Paris. At the Tuppany Hangover, the lodgers sit in a row on a bench. There is a rope in front of them, and they lean out on this as though leaning over a fence. A man, humorously called the valet, cuts the rope at five in the morning. I've never been there myself, but Bozo had been there often. I asked him whether anyone could possibly sleep in such an attitude, and he said that it was more comfortable than it sounded. At any rate, better than bare floor. There are similar shelters in Paris, but the charge there is only 25 centimes, a halfpenny instead of tuppence. A four-penny coffin is adequate description for all you need to know about the accommodation that was on offer here. Upon hearing its name, spending the night in the coffin house must have been an unsettling feeling, to say the least. 
But if you could afford the upgrade, was it a welcome choice in comparison to sitting on a bench or leaning on a rope? Well, clients were provided with a coffin-shaped wooden box so that they could sleep lying down. At least this was an improvement on the one and two penny options. Even if you would be packed into a tightly fitting box in rows like sardines and wake up with all manners of aches and pains, anyone taller than average must have suffered even more. This shelter offered at least the possibility of getting some sleep, as well as tea, bread and a tarpaulin sheet, and whilst scarcely material, that could be considered comfortable, was at least better than no cover at all. George Orwell also described the four-penny coffin. At the coffin, you sleep in a wooden box with a tarpaulin for covering. It is cold, and the worst thing about it are the bugs, which, being enclosed in a box, you cannot escape. 